Hello all, welcome back to the Inquisitive Brain Podcast. I'm Shaw, your host. I hope that you're all keeping well. I'm always interested and looking for those who have navigated the world of science and spirituality and who have seemingly resigned themselves to the belief that research is just ongoing and that we're learning daily and that this has to be a neither this or that, but that they are coalesced. So today I'm speaking with Pete Sanders, who is an author of You Are Psychic, an MIT-trained scientist's proven program for expanding your psychic powers. And we're going to talk about his latest book, Alice Makes an Amazing Discovery, which shows children how to self-trigger natural mood elevation brain fibers for less anxiety, anger, stress, sadness. He has several books, all of which we'll talk about. But a little bit about Pete. Pete is a graduate from MIT with principal studies in biomedical chemistry and brain science. He was offered a place at Harvard Medical School but he turned it down. So we're going to discuss his decision behind that choice, which is very interesting. Pete has presented stress reduction and mind-body wellness techniques at MIT and inside the Pentagon. He has five years as a top secret cleared naval officer. So we discuss his journey into where he is now, which is as a prolific author and retreat organizer in Arizona called Free Soul Sedona. We're going to talk about the limbic system, which is the brain or the part of the brain involved in our behavioral and our emotional responses, especially when it comes to behaviors we need for uh, survival, like feeding, reproduction, caring for our young Uh, and fight or flight responses, which is completely linked to stress, fight or flight response. And Pete also, as a bonus, he takes us through two quick methods that you can all take away for everyday life to help you to access your natural responses to stress. And everyone can use these techniques throughout the day when needed. Very quick, very easy to do. So that's quite exciting. So a very warm welcome to Pete. Pete, thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to have you here. I'm happy to share with you and all of your seeking, inquisitive listeners around the world. They are inquisitive. Thanks, Pete. Now, I've got so many questions to to ask and so many topics to go through to you. And one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show is because a lot of your mind, body, soul work Uh, and you've had a very interesting beginning, which we'll talk about, is very closely linked to some of my journey and what I've been through and training and everything. So mind, body, soul. And on the podcast, we cover psychology, philosophy, also the spirituality part. We're going to talk about the soul and talk about it all. Um, But you've got a passion for sharing all of that information. I know you've done some training as well, especially at MIT and the Pentagon. So what started you on this path of teaching people how to connect with their soul, but also how to heal themselves? Well, I've always been a seeker. I think that if I had to jump to the end to right now, what I most offer your listeners is a Rosetta Stone the missing link that brings all the different areas you cover into a holistic understanding. Mm. Now, like yourself and many of your listeners, I had to go gather that building material. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've ever seen a construction site, it's a mess while they're gathering all the building material. The bigger the the building breakthrough is going to be, the bigger the mess. And I, I most want to share with your listeners and viewers never to feel discouraged about that mess as you're gathering your building material there will be disjointed pieces and what i feel very blessed about is in my later life i found this brain science discovery 
for how to soothe the part of the brain that creates most of our unhappiness and keeps us from being more naturally psychic, keeps us from tapping the extra dimensions of soul that super strength physics says we all exist in. But I had to start off as a seeker gathering that material. I was blessed that my mom, who's passed on now, was always a seeker herself. And probably to give you the short version, uh, my dad was killed by Castro in Cuba. We lost everything. Uh, she had a friend who could get her a job as a bookkeeper in New York City for one of the top architects. I lived three through 10 in West Side Story, part of New York City. And she worked very hard and got me out to Southern California by the time I was 10, 10 through high school there. And she was seeking at different churches, at different spiritual things in California. And then we drove across country in a VW bug, didn't have money for hotels. So, you know, just, but as a young age at the New York World's Fair, that had some of the buildings that are shown in the Men in Black movie. There was a, an exhibit by scientists who were religious and spiritual called Sermons from Science. And the fact that it didn't have to be either or, I literally headed off to MIT saying, what can science tell me that explains some of the faith and spiritual awakenings I'd had? I mean, we had classes in our home in Southern California, and this is kind of an old American reference, but if people can remember the comedian Lou Costello, or the more modern one would be John Candy or John Belushi, picture someone who's like roly-poly like that, who's teaching how to read Oris, but twitching constantly. And his system was so absurd that for the first time in my life, I didn't over try. His system was, Notice where on your body you itch, and where you itch, then look at that place on the person you're looking at body. And that's why he was twitching all the time. And like I said, I said, this is ridiculous. This is never going to work. He's in my house. I'm stuck here. And for the first time, I didn't over try, and I saw the same things he was seeing. And I was not psychically open as a child. But in many ways, that headed me off to brains to MIT saying, what does science know? If I can do this and with practice and finding methods, polish my sensitivities, there must be keys for helping all people do that. And uh, that's what I got from my brain science studies at MIT. I am very blessed and hopeless, hopelessly proud of my beautiful bride of 45 years. She's Sedona's longest serving public school teacher. She has her master's from Columbia and gifted ed. And a lot of the brain science for regular ed, for learning, for children, totally adapts to spiritual learning. So, you know, one of those is the concept of allow yourself to be exploring. Have a theme that can change through time. Give yourself choices but very much about not just philosophies. I, I have a lot of great philosophies in my book. I founded my organization on make life a quest, not a test. And then later in life, I realized this part of the brain called the limbic system drags people into struggle, suffering, and unhappiness and making everything a test rather than a joyous journey. So that's where I say, you know, we'll talk about it more later, that understanding how to not let that evolutionary past limbic brain win is the key to not only blossoming all your abilities and the things we're going to talk about, but interlinking them mm. so that you're not doing ESP, which I don't believe in, mm. extrasensory perception. It's not extra. Everybody has it. I believe in HSP higher sensory perception so if we can counter limbic mm -hmm. tap the soul all of those windows to insight and healing 
open up. Yeah. So sorry for the long-winded answer, but it's it was a wonderful progression yes. of seeking, finding. I think my gift is connecting dots, like putting Legos together to spare people some of the bumps on the road. Absolutely. Now, you brought up some really interesting bits, what I'm going to come to. But, you know, you started out top secret naval officer, so, and you did some volunteering. But then you were offered a place at Harvard Medical School, and you turned it I down. Actually, I actually was accepted to Harvard Med School after graduating with honors from MIT, yes. Principal Studies, Biomedical Chemistry and Brain Science. But I, growing up in Southern California, it seemed that if people wanted to learn meditation, mind-body healing, they were given, I felt, two inadequate options. Either pay a fortune for stuff that really was more commercialism. I, I'm very Gandhi-esque. I, I founded my organization as a nonprofit. Uh, we have charges for materials, but we're really, people would be amazed on how much we run. <laughs> I have to train myself to say not for profit. Yes. But the other thing was they were told, well, you have to leave your religion if you want to develop your psychic senses or learn meditation. You have to be a devotee of a guru. And I said, no, these are secrets from science that work for all people. Um, I am, full disclosure to everybody watching, I am a head over heels fan of Swami Beyond Ananda, the comedian. He does what he calls the lighter side of enlightenment. <laughs> and one of his sticks is nobody should go to a guru unless it's themselves, because if you just spell it slowly, guru is G, you are you. <laughs> Excellent. I dedicated my life to helping people learn methods for being their own best teachers, actual techniques, not just philosophies. Get rid of the hype. Mysticism without revelation just gets in the way. And get to the essence of how it works so that different people can do it their way. Now, Here's my last part of this. This is a horribly nerd analogy. I apologize. But when I graduated from MIT, I felt like I knew how to teach mind-body healing algebra. And I wanted to teach mind-body-spirit calculus. But I didn't know it. So I had to go on another journey. Mm. I paid my bills. I put 70 pounds of gear on a bicycle. And I went around the U.S. visiting sacred sites, meditating in national forests. And a good chunk of what's in my Free Soul comprehensive course and when in the U.R. Psyche book, the extra second stage came at that time. Then I had received from my guides to start Free Soul in 1980. And this was 1974. And I said, well, I believe in serving country. I believe that you know, the freedoms we have, every citizen should give back somehow, whether that's firefighter, teacher's aid. And I was a voluntary service naval officer. My last ship, the fleet flagship for the Mediterranean fleet, uh, I was a top secret cleared nuclear weapons authentication officer. And I finished my service in 1980. And my bride and I moved to Sedona, Arizona where I explain the science of Sedona's vortexes and how people can be a vortex wherever they are. So it was actually making the choice. I know I'd be a good doctor, but I think I can help people more if I can bring this stuff out of woo-woo mm -hmm. and into wow-wow. <laughs> love that. It's amazing. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be ununderstandable or overly mysticized. Yeah. I think you just got the title of your next book there. <laughs> woo woo out of wawa. That is brilliant. But what an interesting journey that is. And I like what you said. You knew you knew your gifts. You knew you could be a good doctor because that is a gift. Not everyone can do it. Uh, these are my beliefs. I'm sure some of you out there may think differently. I don't believe everybody can be a good doctor at all. I think we're all meant to do certain things. But you followed 
what would you say you followed? You followed your intuition, you followed your path, you followed your guides. How would you describe it? I would say intuition, guides, and always coming to the core of being purposeful. Mm. What are the purposes that fulfill me? Mm. Actually, my advisor at, at MIT threw a book at me. She said, how could you be so stupid to put that on your application to Harvard Med School? And I said, what? She said, you put down you want to be a general practitioner, country doctor. I said, yeah, if, if I go into medicine, I want to be the guy that takes a chicken. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to serve people. And I love medicine. That's why I have a lot of insight in mind-body healing. Yeah. There's a whole chapter in the You Are Psychic book. I refuse to do that book unless they let me put that standalone chapter on mind-body healing methods. Mm -hmm. And I did apply it. I was the assistant coach medical trainer for my our small high school, all five of my kids' sports. You know, so I, I was able to apply it in that way. Um, I'm constantly doing different things to help people from the book or beyond it. Um, I had a freak accident in high school that ripped all the cartilage out of my knee. And they said, well, you'll probably need a knee joint replacement in, you know, at some point. And being cheap, you know, and running a nonprofit. Here in the States, I made it 50 years to Medicare and got it done for free. Yay! Wow. But I wrote up all the mind-body healing tips that I did before the surgery, after the surgery, during the surgery. And I, I just don't want to forget this because this is not specifically in that chapter in the Your Psyche book. Yes. The pioneering scientific work for mind-body visualization for healing was done, in my opinion, by Dr. David Felser at UCLA Medical School. Mm -hmm. He found that people who used abstract images, mm -hmm. spaceship energy beams, color rays, did better than his med students who were too exactly trying to picture the tissue. Mm -hmm. Now, the pure scientists say that's because abstract images get into the subconscious mind better. That's true. Mm -hmm. But also, when you allow yourself to think abstractly, I think you open portals to those dimensions beyond, mm -hmm. to those soul energies, universal energies. And that's the big, long, scientific blah, 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 blah for this simple phrase. There is no wrong visualization. Mm -hmm. Use what is meaningful to you. See, remember I mentioned these five elements of yes. a brain-compatible learning environment? One of them is meaningful content. So I might use a particular healing visualization that works for me, mm -hmm. but you might have something that works totally better for you. And here's, here's the thing that most people don't realize. The mind-body visualization that really seems to trigger flowing energy, helping you, will eventually not work. Right. Why? Because okay. it's not about fixing the body. Mm -hmm. It's about learning as a soul. Mm -hmm. And the soul thirsts for new learning. Mm -hmm. So when a visualization seems not to be working as much, find a new one. Mm -hmm. Pick a new one. Because mm -hmm. another aspect of that five elements of a brain-compatible learning environment which, by the way, I want to give credit, was developed by a wonderful educator named Susan Kovalik. People can Google her. Right. Um, but one of those other five elements is choices. You always do better, learn faster, retain better if you feel you have a choice. Yes. So don't imprison yourself mm -hmm. into a choice you made in the past. You're not failing by not using it anymore. You're wow. growing. Wow. You're adding to your recipe book. That is so powerful, this whole idea of choice. And what part of the, well, I'm skipping, skipping ahead. I was going to say what part of the brain, but we're coming to that. But let's talk about my favorite topic, the brain. If you're enjoying the show so far, here's your chance to subscribe and support the channel. Hit that like button. And also, very importantly, leave me a comment wherever you are listening or watching. 
even if you just put an emoji, it lets us know that you're with us. Here's your countdown. Thanks for your support. Now back to the show. Just for a moment. I love the brain. Remember I said make life a quest, yes. not a task? Yes. Quest is a choice word. Nobody says quests are easy. But the minute you think quest, you think exploration, adventure, yes. freedom. Yes. Test is, oh, yes. I got to do it right. So you're talking about language as well. And that's something that's very important when you train in hypnotherapy. I know these things are they're closely linked, all close. And using using visualization. When people first train in hypnotherapy, they use scripts, which are for me, I've always thought they were useless. You cannot apply a script to every person. Everybody's different, situations different, the background's different. You must be creative and use your own. And also let me pause for just a moment. Their own. Mm, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Correct. But one of the things that is very unique, and I'm very proud of in the UR Psychic book, is we honor all four psychic senses. Yes. I am very visual, so I use visualization a lot. I am auditory second, so I mm -hmm. words work for me. Mm -hmm. Someone who is feeling mm -hmm. words and visualizations it gets in the way, but then what feel helps you get in the flow? Mm -hmm. And the least understood, but the most powerful in many ways, is intuition. Mm -hmm. Just So somebody who is low in intuition and low in feeling, but very auditory, that script actually calms their limbic brain so they can flow spirit through them. Mm -hmm. Whereas if someone is more feeling and intuition... If you try and imprison them to a set script, it just cuts off their flow. Right. And usually programs are designed to the strength of the founder. Uh -huh. If the founder is very visual, it's, oh, see this, see that. If the founder is very feeling, it's feel this, feel that. I mean, what I most like about the aura chapter in your psychic that stands alone is it's titled Sensing the Aura. Mm. not just seeing it mm -hmm. how could it be a feeling or a knowing or even tones mm -hmm. so you are obviously high intuitional and feeling yes so you had enough common sense to say this script is a prison Absolutely. because i can tune in to that person and the circumstance and that helps me flow absolutely and you, yes, when you mentioned that part about the, I mean, there's so much. And, and viewers, if you're watching this, I know some of you will be listening, but if you're watching this, I'm looking at my notes because there is so much here that I want to make sure I get in. So I, you see me looking down, but I'm looking at my notes because I don't want to miss anything. Um, in your book, You Are Psychic, actually, uh, which I've read. Uh, you do talk about the aura and how you first started seeing auras as well. And my experience was similar, but I started out seeing just the, the I would see the white, misty, and then the gold. And then I started seeing colors, which was, wow, exciting. Um, I thought, oh, I don't actually have to live as an adult in the 60s. This feels like <laughs> very much like what it would have been. So, it, you know, the hippie sort of thing. So that was wonderful. But your experience as well was, you know, you saw, you talk about the halo, which if you see an aura, guys, that's kind of what you see, a bit of an outline around someone. It's usually like a white, misty outline, literally an outline around someone. And I just want to come back and say, yes, if someone is not high in psychic vision, it's not their strength. Yes. But they're high in intuition. They may never see an aura, but they'll know that color should be there. Yes. Thank and you. that's what they want to trust and go with. And there's a lot in my book about how you can get a tremendous amount of information, even if you never see color just from boundary mm -hmm. 
if if you've all seen heat ripples on a highway yes if someone's talking to you and you have that rippling sense <laughs> there that's an indication to be nice that they're not telling you the whole truth hmm, that's a good there's actually, go ahead there's actually a story in my book when i i was raised an apartment dweller and I, I bought one house in my life. I don't want to buy another house. But when I was buying that house, the guy who owned it was a realtor who built it himself. He could eat me for breakfast. And he told me the lot next to us is owned by this friendly dentist in Phoenix. And he'll let your kids play there. And the whole time, his aura is just doing this. So I called the friendly dentist in Phoenix. And he said, no, your kids can't play on that. If they fall, you sue me. And you know what? That retaining wall that holds up your lower driveway, I think it's six inches on my property line, and I'm going to sue you and make you take it down, which would collapse the whole lower driveway. So I didn't sign the contract. Amazing. The, the owner and that guy did the dueling surveys, and he was right. The wall was six inches on his pro the dentist's property line. And I made the seller pay the dentist. This is back in 1985. The $8,000 he required for this six inch by 30 foot strip <laughs> worked for my frugalness. Now, my wife, never to miss a humorous moment, said, Oh, this is just another example of men in their six inches. <laughs> That was her comment. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it's but, we need humor with it all, but thank goodness for your sixth sense. Or if you and think, yeah, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, <laughs> and beyond. And all the senses, absolutely. Wow, that's fascinating. Excellent stuff. So. You know, I listeners, I'm going to put all of Pete's books and the links to all of, you know, his site, and we're going to talk about it all. But I want to talk about your book, uh, Access Your Brain's Joy Center. And this is the free soul method, because you talk a bit about the soul and why this, there it is, that's it. And it's very easy to find as well on Amazon, and, and I'm sure other places it's available. But one of the things you talk about is the soul and how it's not a religious concept. I know people associate it with religion, but can you talk a bit about why the soul is not a religious concept as such? I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to come back to what the phrase, the free soul method means, because yeah. it is on every one of my books. Yes. Super strengths physics is changing all of science like, like Einstein stuff did. Um, there's a very respected scientific public television show in America called Nova. And they've run multiple segments on it. Viewers can order the digital download of uh, the elegant universe or fabric of the cosmos if they really want to get into the details. But the short version is your top physicists are now saying... We now know that everything, you, me, the table, the planet, everything exists in a minimum of 10 or more dimensions. Mm -hmm. The three of space we're used to, front, back, right, left, up, down, time, and then these dimensions beyond. Yes. Most people are aware how the majority of an iceberg is below the water, only a little sticks above. Mm -hmm. Turn it upside down. Super strings physics says this here is the above the water part of the iceberg. It is real, but there's this huge more. Mm -hmm. And to me, I can talk to a complete atheist and say, you as a soul, and I mean you and your six or more other dimensions, the part of you that is beyond physical, that even science is saying we exist in. That's why I think it's it's no longer an either or, it's a yes and. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, if it's just faith that you believe you have more, people tend to limit themselves to believing in and wishing, hoping, praying for. 
when it crosses over into science, it becomes, well, what are you going to do about it? How can you tap those dimensions beyond for enhanced insight, enhanced healing, enhanced serenity? And the free soul method as a phrase isn't meant to mean me, Pete Sanders. It's actually not even meant to mean the foundation. It's a commitment to an ideal that anything I put in a book, a DVD, or a lecture is going to be methods that help people be free. The freedom to have less struggle, stress, and unhappiness, and more health, healing, and success. That is each person's birthright, and that's what I've dedicated my life to being a facilitator of helping them joyous journey on, not just survival struggle. Yes, and as you said, that free soul is on all of your products, and that philosophy, I think, is freeing in itself that you can learn even if you don't know how now you can learn how to heal yourself how to help yourself and i suppose that's what we should all be learning to do look at when we get into it more yes we'll talk about how the limbic brain from our evolutionary past yes actually wanted us to be worried and anxious and Mm -hmm. not joyously free because in our evolutionary past we were more survivable miserable than happy if you went walking through the meadow oh isn't life great something would make you lunch absolutely well let's talk about it now because that was my next bit about the brain so let's talk about the limbic system the part of your brain that involves uh, behavioral aspects and we go, I'm, I'm going to put up something. Uh, so as this is going, viewers, you will see uh, a picture that Pete has kindly provided. And it will have the limbic system. Oh, there it is there. But you, I will also... And it, is, it is this darker loop. It's the part of the brain in this darker loop. And the brain scientists say... It generates 90% of our unhappiness, our worries, hurts, angers, and fears. Now, people say, oh, fight or flight. No, no. Fight or flight is the lower part of the brain, uh, cerebellum, brainstem. Limbic is in the middle, and it's worse. And here's an interesting Arizona example for being in Sedona. If someone is walking on a trail here, and they come across a rattlesnake, and they run, that's fight or flight. Mm -hmm. If they happen to be studying or see a PBS nature special that says, well, there are 12 different species of rattlesnake in Arizona. And because of that, they won't go on a trail. Mm -hmm. Or when they are on the trail, they're not having a good time because they're, where's the rattlesnake? Where's the rattlesnake? And uh, you might see a rattlesnake and run once in your life, but you can worry about a rattlesnake thousands of times. And people get that, but I, w- I want to make it even clearer. There used to be an old game show on TV called Name That Tune, where with a few notes you tried to, what's the song? Yes. So let's do a different version. And I know this is very prevalent in the U.S. I think it's worldwide. We'll see. Name the movie. Dunna, 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 dunna. Yeah. Jaws. Yes. The chance of being bitten by a shark <laughs> is less than your chance of being hit by lightning. Or here's the funny one killed by a cow. And wow. yet that movie made people incredibly afraid of getting in the water. So that gives you an idea of the power of limbic brain. Mm-hmm. And it kept us alive in the past, but in many ways it keeps us suffering rather than exploring. Is that, like, because, here, here's a, is that because we've evolved or because just life has changed? Well, actually it's worse now. In our evolutionary past, It was triggered by what you saw, heard, Mm 
smelled or remembered. So it's kind of like a fun scenario. Oh, you cave elders, you don't know anything. You think you have enough food for the winter. But when I was a cave cub, there was that horrible winter. We ran out of food a month before the snow melted. We almost starved. I don't care how much food you think you have put aside. It's not enough. Mm. The limbic brain, regardless of your age, gender, profession, or circumstance, this thing is constantly spitting out feelings of not enough, never enough, not good enough. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to illustrate one other thing with your permission. W would you like to see and understand why you should never worry about what you eat? Would that be helpful to know? Yes. Are you going to do the minute, one minute um, exercise? Nope. Oh, this is this something is oh, This is extra. Yes, Look, please. <laughs> imagine if you were standing next to me. Yes. And I put my hands on your shoulders and I said, I want you to tell me how this feels. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. What about you? Oh, God, that feels terrible. Yes. We'd cleanse your aura. I would put my hands in the exact same place. Mm -hmm. Tell me how this feels now. Are you ready? Yes. I care about you. Oh, that feels nice. Right. Care about what you eat. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what you eat. You might eat the best nutritional diet, but if you trigger limbic, did I get the exact right type of organic almond milk? The nervous anxiety through the tissue might actually counter the good nutrition. All concerns are valid we have the ability to choose to go limbic hamster wheel worry or soul care choice. And again, I hope this made this over the pond. I'm sure it did. But if Will Smith had known my discovery in chapter one for how to trigger mood elevation fibers that counter limbic, he wouldn't be banned from the Oscars for 10 years. Yes. Did you see the show? It did make it over. No, I don't watch the show, but it did make it over here, and I've refrained from commenting. But yeah, well, I agree. No, no. He initially laughed at the joke. Uh, yeah, I saw that. And then he looked at his wife, and she was not happy. And he since said that just triggered something in him. What it triggered in him was the, oh, I got to protect my woman. Now, if he had known chapter one with this simple technique for how to trigger these mood fibers, he would have calmed down. He would have whispered to Jada, his wife, Jada, he has to pee sometime. <laughs> I will beat of him in the restroom, not in front of 10 million people. Yes. Want yes. to hear the female version of this? Yes. In our evolutionary past, if you were a young female that was not liked by the other females in the tribe, Maybe you were obviously going to be very attractive and jealousies, or you were very outspoken and a threat to the matriarchy. You were left behind and thrown out and died. Does that give you an idea why a teenage girl can feel suicidal if some idiot doesn't like them on Facebook? She's not, she's not weak-minded. It's actually a biological reflex that we can and should as souls rise above. All concerns are valid. Mm. Don't go limbic. Mm. Want to hear where care instead of worry totally falls apart? Why? How? When you're caring for someone that you also care about mm. and it's not fixable. Mm -hmm. My wife's 90-year-old mom lived with us her last two years. Nothing I was going to do was going to make her not 90. Mm. So then the word had to be love. Mm. As I'm caring for her and caring about her, I'm loving, I'm not making fixing my worth. Mm. And that is the other big, huge secret for mind-body healing. What cuts off our flow of energy is worrying about can I fix this physical thing? Mm -hmm. Make it an adventure. What can I learn 
about how to send energy to that area. Mm-hmm. And that, that opens you up. It actually, when we're limbic, mm-hmm. we actually lower our killer T cell level, number one immune system fighter. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say understanding limbic brain and how to counter it is kind of like the missing link Rosetta Stone. Because when you're limbic, you can't be psychic. When you're limbic, you can't be loving. When you're limbic, you can't be flowing healing energy. So I, in my talks in Sedona, I say the four secrets to triggering the vortex effect. Number one, tap dimensions beyond. That's the soul shift technique that I hope we can share with people live. Yes, yes. But they can always go to my freesoul.net website and watch it on the video. Okay. Just don't laugh if I had less hair, less gray hair when we taped that long ago. But number two is... Don't let the limbic brain be this anchor chain on the soul that keeps us struggling, Mm -hmm. suffering, rather than joyous journey. And Pete, why is it that, do you think that science, because it has taken a while and there's still a lot of work to be done, is it more research that needs to be done to be accepted uh, that there are more dimensions, that we are multidimensional, and that we can tap into these resources? Or is it specifically that science has to produce for us the actual research? It has to be in front of us, the research papers, you've got to have everything. Is that I think it's a process, and I want to point out that human pioneering always precedes complete scientific proof. Columbus didn't have satellite navigation and he he made a huge discovery out of the courage to explore he was wrong about a lot of things he thought he was discovering the way to India but it was still a huge discovery Einstein initially was vilified by orthodox German physicists because his breakthrough discoveries were all math. There was no experimental proof yet. And it wasn't until a British astronomer said, well, you do know that relativity predicts that light will be bent as it goes around the sun. So during a full solar eclipse, we should be able to see star shift. And they go, oh, excited. We're going to go measure that. We'll have the proof. The problem was the next solar eclipse was in Yugoslavia, right during World War I, and this British astronomer got captured with these telescopes and cameras. They thought he was a British spy. They threw him in jail, beat him up. It was another years, but it was eventually proven. Same thing is true where we are now of super strength physics. Supposedly, I mean, the physicists are excited about it because it's the first thing where the math all works for what they call a TOE, theory of everything. Mm -hmm. It ties together Newtonium, quantum, and beyond quantum. Mm -hmm. And supposedly if there's a Higgs boson of a certain weight that is found, that will be the final experimental proof. Well, they they thought we're never going to find a Higgs boson, Mm -hmm. but then they just did at the CERN Hadron Collider several years ago. Mm -hmm. There's many different weights predicted, and so... Will they eventually find that? Will it be something like Columbus, an amazing discovery, but it's not India? Maybe it's only eight dimensions, not 10 or 12. You know, after five, I really don't care if it's six, seven. It's the beyond. And knowing that you exist beyond this, should free you to explore, to be your own pioneer. I mean, here in America, we celebrate Daniel Boone, Kit Carson, all these pioneers. They couldn't call AAA and get a triptych guide. You know, there weren't signposts. And everybody who's listening to this has their own life journey in the forest that they're trying to navigate themselves through. And nothing works well if you don't believe in yourself or you think you can't or you don't know. 
And so in one of my, the fourth secret, a way to get unstuck, uh, a DVD I have called the Sedona Vision Quest System, it has this technique in it and, and other advanced versions, but it's so important. I want to share it with all your viewers and you right now. Hold up one hand like this. Go ahead. In that hand is everything you've ever done, good or bad, in this life. Mm -hmm. Hold up the other hand, just like that, palm. In that hand is everything you still hope to do. Cross the midline and come down and give yourself a hug. Cross your hands in front of you. Mm. Feels good, doesn't it? That's lovely. Yes, that's a wonderful feeling. Immediately, it felt lovely and forgiving as well. And it's free. Amazing. But we're so hard on ourselves, we forget to cherish and nurture ourselves. Now, a variation of this that's very important take that feeling you just had and put it in one hand. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then with that hand, just touch yourself on the heart. You know how it's very similar? Mm. Yes. And that's because it also hits the vagus nerve, which is very soothing. And the reason I like to show the one-hand version is you can't be going around doing this at work with a pain-in-the-butt boss or that relative who every time they see you, the first thing out of their mouth is, oh, you look like, or what would you do to your hair? You know? Yes. But if you have to deal with somebody who's very difficult like that, Always have something you can give them, a piece of paper or something behind you. And then what you can do is when they're starting to really attack you or be obnoxious, you go, wait a minute, I have something for you. And as you turn away, you bring your hand to your heart, pick up whatever it is, and as you come back to give it to them, you let your hand drop. And you can do that cherishing yourself without it even being noticed. And we need that during the day. There are so many limbic triggers. We need things, you know, all my techniques, I call them momentations, mm -hmm. not meditation. Love it. I, mean, I, I raised two active boys. I was lucky if they gave me 30 minutes to meditate once a decade. Oh, yes. And, and I love a long meditation. It's like a great full shower and spa day. But when life only gives you 30 seconds, there are methods you can use to clear limbic brain, shift to soul, be on a journey, tap your higher senses. I mean, I, I felt very blessed that the editor at Macmillan for the original hardcover You Are Psychic, she was totally not interested in the topic. And, and she actually wrote me at one point, I can't understand this. Is it five senses? Is it four senses? Is it nine? And I had to literally write back to her, five physical plus four psychic equals nine total. That's how much she was not into the content. Right. And I was I was kind of complaining about that to one of the other people in the company. And they go, oh, thank you. You're lucky. I said, what do you mean I'm lucky? He goes, she won't mess with your content. She'll just polish the writing so the writing turns the page. Anybody who raises a writes a book on child rearing, any editor who has children wants to change this, say it that way. So be happy she won't mess with your content. But, you know. Your mental health is a priority. Nine Peaches Therapies offers gentle and soothing therapy for your mind, your body, and your soul. These self-help recordings focus on improving the quality of your life by providing what you need right now, be it confidence, positivity, restful sleep, or relaxation. The soothing, calming music has been specially composed to accompany the body of words created by me, an expert practitioner, to help you to achieve the best result. Reprogram your mind using the most gentle and effective guided meditations infused with highly suggestible hypnosis to rid yourself 
of anxiety, fear, stress, and negative thinking. These guided meditations can help you to clear and cleanse any unwanted energy that may be negatively affecting your everyday life. Improve the quality of your life in just a few minutes a day. Nine Peaches Therapies, Holistic Therapeutic Consultancy. Imagine how all of life, two things I want to tell you from a brain and senses point of view. Imagine how all of life would be better if you had nine windows to look through, not just five. How you could make better decisions. Excellent analogy. The one course at MIT that I thought was going to be, our expression was a nothing burger course. Easy A, but not a lot of content was on how the five physical senses work, because I was pre-med and I'd studied the retina and hearing and vision. We got to taste, and the professor used this as guinea pigs. He had developed a tablet that you chewed that for one hour completely knocked out the sour taste buds. And we sat there in class eating different types of raw lemons and tasting the sweet and the different varietals in the different lemons that you never taste because the sour so dominates. This is the sour taste bud of the brain, the limbic system. We all have stuff in our life, but think for a moment, your listeners, your viewers, how would your life be different if the sourness of what you're having to go through was turned down? Or another example is a rose. This thing keeps you seeing only the thorns, not the flower. The thorns are real. You can't go, oh, no, there's no thorns, or you get your hands all cut up. Mm -hmm. But if you can counter just focusing on the thorns, you can grab the rose, you can smell it, you can, you see what I'm saying? Yes. And, you know, Honestly, I'm going to jump super spiritual on you here a moment. Please do. Personally, personally, let, let me ask you a question. Do you believe souls come to planet Earth for a reason? Yes. See, to me, there's only two choices. Either we were floating, you know, either we come for a reason, or we were floating around as a soul and got too close to people having sex and <laughs> stuck in a body again <laughs> that could be that seems a little too random could be but seems too random could be one of, one of the reasons i think souls come to planet earth is to learn to rise above this and be loving even when you're being limbically triggered mm -hmm. and and i try and be non-denominational i i love the spirituality in all religions but if Jesus on the cross could say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, he was, as a soul, not letting this win. I love old movies. The original Karate Kid movie, mm. where he's learning from Mr. Miyagi. Yes. At one point, he goes, Mr. Miyagi, what's the best block? And Miyagi goes, Daniel-san. Best block, no be there. Yes. One of the saddest things is people in relationships don't know about limbic brain, whether it's a, a marriage, a romantic relationship, a business relationship. Yeah. Life limbicizes us. Mm. I call it limbic sunburn. If you're really sunburned, you don't function. Mm. But if you're just a little sunburned, you still go about your life, but everything kind of sucks and you're grumpy and you get in fights with people. If both partners in a relationship come home or into work slightly limbically sunburned, they tend to ah, throw gasoline on each other's fire. Right. Even if you are completely right and that other person's totally wrong, if you can do best block, no be there, identify your limbic triggers. I mean, I love chapter one of Access Your Brain's Joy Center because it teaches people how to trigger those fibers. Right. But chapter three is enhancing the love in your life. Chapter four is 
success without the achievement addiction. And a lot of it is, how can you be loving, not limbic? And this doesn't just mean romantic or with someone else. How can you be loving, cherishing yourself, even though you don't know? You're always allowed to say you don't know, only if you add one word. Yet. Yes. Okay, good. When I was working on the Access Your Brain's Joy Center, I did do a university study oh. where we took three groups. One group was taught the technique. One group was taught something we knew wouldn't work, and the control group got nothing. And using their metrics, it showed that when people knew this, they had less stress. And, you know, so we, we've done some, and I'm open to doing others. I, I'm just open to sharing. Yes. Oh, that's important to know. I love all the studies. That, and I love reading all the papers about it. So this is good. So if somebody's out there and thinking, okay, this is great. So what do I need to do? If I go into a situation and it's heated, I need to not be limbic. And I can use a technique. I can turn my back, bring forward something else, and not step into whatever they're trying to exchange with me. Would that be the best so, way to describe it? Yes. A um, couple of quick things. The yes. brain scientists say anything that pulls you up mm -hmm. gets you out of limbic. Mm. So walking. I believe we're souls wearing the filter of our gender body. Mm. And many men, the male gender body tends to trigger into angers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the most important things is go on a walk. Mm -hmm. Get out, go on a walk. Yeah. Look at the sky. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously nothing's better than knowing where these fibers are and how to trigger them. Absolutely. And the book is in five foreign languages. We recently came out with a children's book. Yes, we're going to for talk about helping that. kids learn this. But, you know, the adult book, explains the science and walks people through exercises you can't do that in a children's book yeah and this was actually uh, a lady who came to one of my talks and said i have a horribly stressful job in new york i it's killing me she got the access your brains joy center called me a week later said have you ever thought of doing a children's book i wish i had known this as a child and we blended our stories at a particularly difficult part in my my life, I was meditating in Bell Rock in Sedona, and I I had this part of the brain where when I hit it, it was like the weight lifted off my shoulders. And I ran home up to my attic, pulled out all my brain science books, and what the hell is there? Well, in her story, she was moved to a new city where she got a lot of prejudice. Her her dad, her mom was Filipino, her dad was African-American, and so they moved her to a city where she literally, her limbic warriors, my, the, the same lady who did this illustration behind me is the illustrator for the book. Wow. And I think she made the book by depicting the limbic warriors and the septum soothers. This part of the brain where these fibers are yeah. is called the septum pellucidum. But for kids, we knew we had to illustrate it the same way I taught it to my grandson when he was four and a half and had a freak accident at a skateboard park, broke his femur, clean through, had to have the surgery for the bar. And, you know, his mom was afraid of medicines, so he didn't even want to take children's Tylenol. But he let me teach him how to trigger those fibers wow. kind of the same way we illustrate in the book and he could go to sleep through the pain. Let me teach it to him in the hospital. So that's all the proof I need that this can work for kids because he had the most extreme Ooh, situation. A hip fracture. And a hip yeah, fracture. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was bad. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it's in five languages. I've taught it around the world. Um, people can go to our website and, you know, for some reason, the Access Your Brain's Joy Center is in Czech. 
and I got an email from a Czech Special Forces captain in Afghanistan telling me that he was using Chapter 1 and teaching his men how to trigger those fibers for PTSD relief. Oh, And that's all I need in this life. That started me teaching it for free to vets. Vets, any country's vets can go on our website and learn it. When I got to Norfolk, Virginia Beach, there was a destroyer captain, a ship captain, who wanted it for his whole ship, but the ship was in the Persian Gulf. And this was before Zoom. Right. So we got his Navy nurse wife to bring in a military videographer, and we filmed it. And what? so people can find the Access Your Brain's Joy Center on you know Amazon for Kindle, but it helps our nonprofit foundation if they get it through our website as a digital download because they can get the PDF of the book, the MP4 file of that DVD that was filmed by a military videographer oh. for PTSD relief, and an MP3 file of a CD that guides people in finding them. And that's not available through the standard you know, Kindle or Amazon. Wow. You Are Psychic is not available through our website because oh. you know, it's with a publisher, but it is as an ebook or an audible book. And believe it or not, it's actually in an audible book in German in Germany. Excellent. Right? A, a lady wanted to do it and she made it happen. So I'm just excited how the digital technology lets this get everywhere. Incredible. But you just to go back to Alice makes a discovery because um, the, these self triggers children go through so much. If we we all we've all had experiences, you know, I haven't had that. I had great friends at school, but some there can be cliques and there can be uh, jealousy and competition at school because you're young, and this technique can help children. I believe. Just kind of step away from that or not to lessen their worth, to know their worth at a young age. Correct. What would you Correct. say about that? Well, that's why I think it's crucial. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, For a long time, I worked with teenagers and I'd look at them and I'd say, I know you think I'm an old fart with this gray, but here's what we have in common. I hate being told what to do and I hate paying for something I can get for free. Here's the part of the brain that makes you feel more miserable than you need to be. Don't let it. And absolutely don't waste one penny of your hard-earned money on alcohol, tobacco, or drugs. Nicotine, by the way, soothes limbic. That's why vaping is running through teenagers. Right. Yes, okay. But if kids can learn this, see, they have proven that when kids are limbic, they don't learn. Mm -hmm. Remember five elements of a brain compatible learning. First one is limbic soothing. Mm -hmm. That's why kids in gang neighborhoods don't learn. They're not stupid, but when you're in survival stresses, you don't care about grammar and long division. So if you can teach kids how to soothe limbic, not only are they happier and less fearful, but they actually retain the learning yes. and can be more joyous in life. Mm -hmm. And, what I love about, I'm kind of frustrated at the price of overseas shipping. I mean, oh. to ship the books to the UK costs more than the book. So that's why I like having everything as a digital download. Yeah. With people having tablets now, they can order the digital download of the children's book. And it's eight and a half by 11, nice big pictures. And they can read it to their child on a tablet. Wonderful. And by the way, through Kindle, not through our website, Hi. one of my instructors translated uh, many of our things uh, into Spanish. So again, the links are all on our freesoul.net website. Amazing. Uh, and I'm just excited. I'm very passionate. I like to tell people worldwide, we are a nonprofit public ed. If you do charity work, send us a donation that we can use to help get copies of this in every children's hospital and every library 
so that kids have resources for pain control, for not feeling less than just because they're different, you know. Yeah. And and difference can be you're the only redheaded girl in the in the class. Exactly. Could be anything. Yeah. Or the, only, the only one who wears glasses or you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I get passionate. No, about no, this. don't apologize. But children are very creative. I see. Well, early in my practice, I saw a lot of children used hypnotherapy for with them for enuresis, for nightmares, for bullying, for tests, you know, exams, and they're very creative. They do some amazing things. And all I have to say to them is, picture this and use your own, and they're off. We teach kids to brush their teeth. Mental health is as important as dental health. Absolutely. Learning to trigger these proven mood elevation fibers works as easily as brushing your teeth. And, you know, we don't want kids to have cavities and bad breath. Why do we want them to have fears and insecurities and, you know? Excellent point. And, and the whole thing I say is for adults, when they've never heard about limbic brain, Mm -hmm. When they don't feel good, anxious, angry, can't release a hurt, this is what they do. What's wrong with me? I thought I was more spiritual than that. And I always say to people, if you get nothing out of this part of my work, remember this phrase. When you don't feel good, it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. It's your physiology. Learn to counter the physiology and live life as a soul. Yes. Good Good point. That's why I say it. Yes, well, on your diagram as well, you talk the olfactory part is there, which I found so interesting because that's one of my senses. I can smell things, taste things sometimes that aren't in front of me, you know. And and it's so when we look at the senses, and if you're psychic or whatever you want to call it, have these extra sensories, they they lead out to that. There it is. The limbic limbic is within this darker loop. This lighter loop is part of the olfactory system. Smell can soothe limbic. Flagstaff, Arizona, north of us in Sedona, has the highest concentration per square mile of any city in the world of ponderosa pine trees. And ponderosa pine trees put out a vanilla smell that for people is soothing. Now, psychic smell seems to be an offshoot of psychic intuition. Mm -hmm. People who are very intuitive seem to also get things as smell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smell can also trigger limbic. Mm -hmm. oh. If somebody was molested by a weird Uncle Al who wore Old Spice, right. the old cologne, yes. the new in America, we have this, this Old Spice body wash for men campaign. That's not going to work on her boyfriend. Right. Or certain incenses might trigger bad feelings. So a good aromatherapist will encourage people to be aware of that or they'll give people an inhaler mm. rather than put the oil and, you know, go all over. But the other thing that soothes limbic is music. Mm. Music has charms to soothe the savage beast. Mm. So knowing how to use music, we literally need to teach people how to sing their own song in their head for uplifting themselves. So there's many different approaches that I weave into everything. That's one. Just so you know how music comes in. When I founded Free Soul, I got out of the Navy. I wrote my textbook, did the tax exempt incorporation for a year with no income. I headed out to my first lecture with $600 in the bank scared out of my mind and i said i'm going to go to the money runs out and on my drive to that first lecture in albuquerque new mexico i heard in my head olivia newton john's song got to believe we are magic wow and my fear drifted away and it's never ended i've just you know <laughs> so i encourage people to to have songs, use them. When you know what you're doing, it helps you get you out of limbic even better than just passively listening. Yes. And, you know, we, a couple of quick questions for you. 
uh, two things about music. What were some of the music or the bands or artists you were drawn to when you were growing up? Well, I had a, a lot of tough circumstances. Mm -hmm. Only child. We, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, and I really loved growing up the Beach Boys because mm -hmm. it was about joy, sunshine. I'm a huge fan of John Denver's music. Mm -hmm. Sunshine on my shoulders. You fill up my senses. Rocky Mountain High. I love ABBA. I love Billy Joel. Some of the best music is upbeat melodically, but intense lyrically. A lot of ABBA's music's that way. Yes. A lot of Bee Gees yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, but just lastly about the music bit, the reason I brought that up is to find out from you a little bit more about how we can use music. So it's listening to music, but it's also that vibration. I wonder what you thought about that. Music kind of gives a, vi a bit of a vibration and it can change your entire physicality, your mood, your aura, I believe. Remember, when you move to the music, remember anything that pulls you up, gets you out of limbic? That's it. Well, music areas are above limbic, but also dance, moving. Yes, that's it. You're using higher cortex areas. In general, every generation has their own version of oldies. Oldies was the music that was playing when you were in high school and you thought you had problems. It soothed you then, it soothes you now. But again, choices. Right. Allow yourself to Oh, you froze there for choose the change over time. Yes, okay. You froze there just for a second. Um, but you were saying choices and then choose the music that works for you and that that can change. Perfect. At a different phase in your life, a different song or a different artist might really resonate with you. Great. Thank you for that. I just wanted to touch upon that. If we can do this exercise, I think our listeners, our viewers would, would love it. And I'll do it as well. I'll do it along. In general, it works best to close your eyes, okay. but choices. You can keep your eyes open or closed. Happy. The reason eyes closed work is limbic soothing. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't close your eyes if you didn't feel safe. Mm -hmm. But basically, we're going to just ride an elevator, focus lower legs, and ride the elevator up through the body, and I'm going to lead that. So take a deep breath, blow it out, relax and close your eyes, and just start to be more aware of your own body than your environment. Just kind of sense your own bubble of space. And then focus your awareness more on your lower legs. Feel your feet, your ankles, your calves, and just start to shift your focus up through the body. Be aware of your knees, your thighs, all of your awareness shifting up through your hips, waist. You're just riding that elevator through the body, chest, shoulders, all of your awareness shifting up to the head area and make that final shift up, out, and just let the boundaries come off. And see how far you can stretch. See if you can sense into the corners of the room or even beyond the room. Notice how you can be aware in all directions and how you can extend into that beyond. And just sense how that part of you feels more timeless, more peaceful, how whenever you want, you can climb that ladder up to this pocket of peacefulness and just unwind. Get one last experience. And get ready to shift your focus back into the head area. All of your awareness just above the head and make that shift. Bring your focus down into the head area Come aware of your eyes, your ears. Note the difference in feel as you come back fully three-dimensional. Come aware of your arms, your legs, and then just wiggle your fingers or tap your toes in the ground to bring yourself fully back. 
And when you feel comfortable, go ahead and gently open your eyes. I don't want to. <laughs> Oh, that now, was before fun. you move too much, especially the viewers, listeners, how's that feel? Wonderful. It's relaxing, isn't it? Wonderful. Medically, they say it is only supposed to take five minutes of sitting for your heart rate and blood pressure to relax out. That's why they can claim that the blood pressure they take in the doctor's office right. is accurate because you're usually waiting longer than five minutes. Right. If people have been listening to this whole thing without getting up, they've been sitting for an hour. Yes. It should be virtually impossible in a three-minute technique people are doing for the first time after sitting for an hour to create any relaxation difference. Does that give you an idea of how much limbic tightness we carry? Yes. Absolutely. I don't know what it's like in the UK, but here in the US, I have never gone to the doctor's office gotten there early and had them say, oh, the doctor's running ahead of time. Come on in. True. So when I'm sitting there, I'm doing the soul shift. I'm triggering the fibers. I do the even better blood pressure lowering techniques on the PTSD DVD or the healing chapter of the UR Psychic starts with that. Mm -hmm. And I set my blood pressure at 120 over 70 and don't have to listen to the Lipitor lecture. That is incredible. You can learn to do the soul shift. Exactly. In 30 seconds, not three minutes. It is not stress and tension that kills people. What kills people is tension retention. Mm. They get wound and they don't unwind through the day and then a straw breaks the camel's back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you can do triggering the joy center fibers, mini soul shift, at breaks in your day, you unwind the clamps on our arteries and you're not running hypertensive all day. Amazing. And it's all skills mm -hmm. that we don't teach in school, but that I've put in my materials. Again, methods. Yeah. I mean, philosophy is good. Mm -hmm. Feel the love of God. Well, that takes your blood pressure down. But knowing a physiological technique, you can blend with your prayer with your affirmation, with seeing the beauty of the sky, then it gets even better. We are doing things here in the U.S. called mindfulness work. Yes. And again, um, when you allow people choice of how to do it and know that the basic issue is soothing the limbic brain, the amygdala tends to make a lot of anxiety. It does many things. Yeah. And the prefrontal cortex is a main learning area. And Goldie Hawn, the comedian, has a wonderful, I got to mention it, for children called mindup.org, oh. where parents can download free things. But to see her talking neurophysiology on CNN like I would was a hoot. And she goes, kids, the amygdala is the barking dog. Woo! Yes. And when the wise old owl prefrontal cortex wants to learn, if the barking dog is, whoa, I can't learn. So we're going to take a brain break, and we're going to sit down, and we're going to pet the barking dog. Good. For some kids, letting them have those desks where they can move their feet mm -hmm. or the spinners, those are things that can help them be out of limbic. You just got to do something that's not distracting to the other kids. Okay. Oh, go so This is all from the whole field. Didn't know about mine. She's had a she's had a mental health foundation for adults for thirty years, and her children's program went digital just a year ago. It's called MindUp.org, and they're doing great work helping parents and kids. That is brilliant stuff. Now, lastly, let's talk about your retreats in Sedona. So you offer the, it'll all be on the website, but. Tell our listeners a little bit about your retreats and what you offer. What I offer is uh, weekly presentations that give people the following. Everything they need to know to understand how Sedona's famous vortex sites work, how to find vortexes in their home area and wherever they travel, but most importantly, how to create the vortex effect 
how can you be a vortex wherever you are for insight no matter what site you're in? But basically, it's also designed to let people be able to do their own retreat. Mm -hmm. Gives them directions. They can figure what they want to work on, what sites to go to. For people who want a lead experience, Sedona's famous for Jeep Tours. Mm -hmm. I trained this last year all of the guides of a company called Earth Wisdom Tours. I do have my permit to take large groups on the land, but at 71, I said it's time for me to pass the baton. And I trained their guides, and I wrote their four Vortex tours. So it would have the type of content I would want. And anybody who does a Jeep tour with Earth Wisdom, they get sent a digital copy of the Scientific Vortex Information book and the 50-minute professional DVD. And again, all this is under the website, either under Sedona Programs or Sedona Tours. Um, I hope at some point to travel again to the UK. I would love to see the UK publish a UK edition of You Are Psychic, rather than just have the American one. So if there's any publishers out there that want to do it, yes. they can contact Macmillan. I mean... It's had a life, it went from German to Polish to Estonian to Russian over a period of 10 years. Yeah. So it it makes me very sad we don't have a French language edition. Yeah, so we have a lot I of would love stuff. to see French, you know, anyway. But um, no, that's great. If there's anybody who wants to support my coming and teaching, I have taught with a simultaneous translator in Japan and Switzerland. Yes. Obviously, it's a lot easier teaching in English, but I really, I, I have a love for you folks across the pond, and if there's anybody, I'm just at a point where, with caring for some family relatives, I can't do a lot of logistics myself, but I used to be caring for two. I'm down to just one, and am more free to travel. So, okay, but even if I never get there, what I love about the internet and digital downloads is I can connect to the spiritual family of the soul through programs like yours. I so bless you. I love the title of your podcast. It just captures that joyous. And, and by the way, interesting thing, bird sound soothes limbic. Mm -hmm. If you're in the forest and there's no bird sound, it means danger. Wow. And just on a fun note, that is so true that New York City Manhattanites will put up with the pigeon poop just to hear. It's lovely. So I love how your title and your graphics encapsulates that joyous exploring spirit that I wish for everybody. And thank you for being a part of making that possible. Pete, your work is fantastic. It's amazing. There's so much into it. Listeners, viewers, I know you got so much out of it, as much as I did. I will put all the links, the books, everything there. I I started out with You Are Psychic. For, very, for obvious reasons. So, um, and, and I love it. Here, here's the problem. Publishers... When you have a book with a publisher, yes. they, tend, they tend to think that once a book is a year old, mm -hmm. that's it. It's no oh, good. I and I specifically wrote the You Are Psychic book so it would be timeless. Okay. Kind of like okay. Linda Goodman's Sun Signs. Yes. And, yeah. you know, what will take, I, people can get it, I'm sure, in print in England, yeah. but it takes their going to the bookstore and saying, I want you to stock this. Right. Now I did I did upgrade some of it when I narrated it into Audible book. Okay. So you know the, the most recent version, the core stuff is all the same. Uh but I'm I'm just reaching out because you reach a lot of people. I would love I would love to see it be more available. There are still oh. many of us who like to have the print version. Yes. Um I have the print version, yeah. Oh, on the website, the freesoul.net website, there is a contact us button, yes, yes. and those, those do get to me. That would be So fun. if somebody 
you know. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you, I'm sure. And also visit Pete's retreats as well. Arizona, yeah, everybody tends to want to go to Arizona for a spiritual awakening. I'm not quite sure how that all started. I traveled the world as a naval officer, climbed Mount Fuji, was in the Holy Lands many times, visited Lourdes. Sedona has the best combination of characteristics for triggering that vortex effect. Neurostimulating red-orange rock. Where else is there red-orange rock? Uluru, Australia, sacred site to the Aborigines. We are green year-round. Northern Arizona is high-altitude pine forest, not Phoenix Desert. Green soothes limbic. We associate green with hope. Mm -hmm. I made it to another spring. And the blue sky visual vastness we have also soothes limbic. And the nice thing is, Sedona has everything. It has camping sites. It has high-end resorts. It has B&Bs. It has Airbnb. You know, people can come from all backgrounds. And very close is the Grand Canyon, which is the largest inflow vortex on the planet for going inward. So that's why a lot of people like to make spiritual pilgrimage. We love having people's tourist dollars, but the most important thing is whether you never travel to Sedona or not, be on a journey, not a retreat, an advance of loving yourself as a soul. And remember to do the cherishing at least once a night when you go to bed, I'll practice again tomorrow, but I'm going to love myself for having the courage to try, to explore. Pioneering isn't easy, but you know the great thing about pioneering? You're never lost. You're pioneering. <laughs> Wonderful, and I love that advance, not retreat. Why don't we all call it a retreat? I guess it's a retreat from life, but you're not really retreating from life. I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a retreat from struggle mm. to your center. Mm -hmm. And when you do the soul shift and go inward, then it's even easier to love yourself because you feel this beautiful unlimited potentials universe you are. Yeah. Because it's nice to I like have the word play and say advance. Advance, <laughs> not retreat, because monks remove themselves from everyday life to try and find that zen or that space. Um, and see, this is a very important thing, whether you have room for it in the show or not. They do that to quiet the limbic noise. Well, if you agree with me that we came to planet Earth to have a body and learn how not to let this win, mm -hmm. then the secret isn't retreating from its being triggered it's how to let it be there and choose to quest, care, explore. And that's what I call active enlightenment, mm -hmm. not just withdrawal trying to find enlightenment. Wow. That's powerful. Mm. Okay. And we haven't even talked about what's well, on my Science for Living as a Soul DVD, which is science things that make super strings physics look like the tip of the iceberg. How to ungunk the soul layers and let the energy that the physicists say is 15 times more than what the average person thinks of as the whole universe flow through you. You learn to counter limbic brain. You can go with the flow no matter what you're handling. You clear the hurts that are buried in our soul pearl layers. You can go beyond going with the flow to glowing with the flow. That's what I actually think the term enlightenment came from. Light from within. Eight. Every mind, body, spirit healing technique is as a minimum doubled if you're not just drawing energy from the outside in, you're ungunkifying old hurts 
and let that energy flow from within you. You can learn to be the river, not just the rapids and the rocks. And can All, you mention the book again, just so we... So. Uh, that's in the Science for Living as a Soul 2 DVD set. Just that so people I can digital download. Uh, they just have to be at a good internet connection because the mp4 files have a lot of content but it's it's a live recording of my teaching are most advanced things mm -hmm. if somebody can't come to sedona we filmed what i thought was our best sedona retreat called limitless love how to enhance love of self love of life love relationships and love connection and, and what i like about that is it's not a digital download, it's on Vimeo. I love Vimeo, because if somebody doesn't have a good internet, yeah. with Vimeo, you get a link and a password, and it's like you can watch it for the rest of your life, stop, fast forward, go back. Mm. So that's why we went to that for this literally weekend retreat that was filmed during Valentine's Day in Sedona several years ago, and it is timeless, just like the UR Psychic book. So we have a whole wealth of materials. Mm -hmm. There is a, a link at the homepage that says study order, where yeah. we kind of walk people through if they want help, what should I do first? But it's all designed to empower them. Yes. And that is your, it's, it appears that's your life purpose, really, to empower. I mean, would that be accurate? That's what you do. You empower people. You help them. I try to do that. And I like people to know that I think my life purpose as a soul is more people. But I use every experience as a learning. Yeah. I don't let peaks and valleys get me down. I turn the valleys into pre-peaks. Love it. We make polished stones as we tumble them in grit. Yeah. We all have grit in our life or stuff that rhymes with grit. Yes, yes, exactly. Pete, you froze just for a second, only for a second, it, when you said, I believe my life purpose is, and then it, you froze. To help empower people to live more joyously by going through ups and downs myself and learning. Mm -hmm. When I went back to my 50th retreat, or excuse me, 50th reunion at MIT, mm -hmm. I also went on a cruise to Nova Scotia, where my mom was born, and down the St. Lawrence Seaway. And I consciously chose to make that retreat, looking at all the things I'd done in my life and places where it stopped being a joyous journey and became a survival struggle and getting insights for how not to let that happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm applying that now with the children's book. Mm -hmm. It's part of what's in the science for living as a soul. And I'm sharing that mostly because I want people to know if they still have stuff, there is a medical term for that. Normal. <laughs> Stop people from doing this. Instead of punish, That's it. polish. How can I use it as a pre-peak for new learning? You, there will be things that you continue to work on and you continue to challenge, and that's a part of the the journey that we talk about. And part of our language working against us, mm. no more working on it. Mm. Play on it. Play on it. Okay, there we go. Those are things we're playing on. <laughs> I like, and language is so important. Pete, this has been jam-packed with nuggets, so um, I cannot wait <laughs> for people to hear this interview. Thank you so much. I know you've got a busy day. Um, it's evening here. I really appreciate your time. I most want to help children through the children's book. Okay, good. And um, the nice thing about the Limitless Love Vimeo retreat, mm -hmm. we do recommend people get the Access Your Brain's Joy Center mm -hmm. and the Science for Living as a Soul because it builds on that. Right. But I like how that's available forever for people if they have neither the time nor the money to travel to Sedona. 
if they ever do come to Sedona, they can always look on our website and it'll have where I'm speaking and we'll have all the latest material kind of weaving everything in. But between here and eternity, there's nobody we're not going to cross paths with. Mm -hmm. So instead of goodbye, we say till next time. Till next time. Thank you for doing the Inquisitive Ren. It's been a joy. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.